scored off. Gordo! Gordo! Hey man! I'm looking for you. Where are you? Gordo! Gordo! Come on, Gordo! I'm sure you're around here somewhere. Gordo! 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 Man, where is he? Where are you? Gordo! Gordo! Gordo? Snakes and angels. Hey there, fans of obscure music. This is Peter Scove for Music is a Journey. Oh! Gordo! Right! Uh, wait a second. I'm not ready. Just a moment. I'll be ready. And here I am, back again, ready to take off with this special episode. Yes, this is a special episode because this is an episode where I get to introduce a particular artist. And in this case here, I'm very excited because this particular artist has been working for the last few years to put out his... Well, I guess it's his sophomore album. He had an album back in 2015 and his new album is finally ready to go and it's going to be released on September 10th. I am talking about Gore Music, which is basically Gordo Bennett. <laughs> Gordo Bennett and his Gore Music. Um, I guess it's his music project here because Gordo has a few different things going on which I'll tell you about a bit later on. But this album here, Snakes and Angels, this is his follow-up album to his Fun in Outer Space album, which is a digital download only. Uh, and this is coming out here in just a few weeks. And because I kind of know the guy, <laughs> well, through the internet anyway, um, he has given me a copy in advance. And very good special news, because I know the guy. <laughs> And um, also because I'm in touch with Nick Katona of Melodic Revolution Records. This is going to be released on Melodic Revolution Records. You've heard me talk about Melodic Revolution Records a few times because actually I am in touch with a few of the artists on that label as well as the man in the big hat, Nick Katona. So both Nick and Gordo have given me their blessing to feature a few small snippets, snippets of music from this exciting new album. So I am able to give you a sneak preview. Sneak preview. Okay, so yeah, I know Gordo, but I'm really telling you this is an exciting new album. I mean, I was excited to hear about it because Gordo and I have kind of talked about it a little bit over the last couple of years and it's been coming together. But I've listened to it a few times now and I'll tell you, when you really put your ears to it, I mean, it's an exciting album to hear for the first time. But when you really put your ears to it, this is one that just pulls you in more and more. And as I was preparing notes for this video tonight, I was really listening carefully and making notes on my iPhone. And yeah, this is really a killer album. All right, so before I even tell you about that, this is a prog rock album, okay? This is a prog rock opus, more or less, um, by Gordo. There are some heavier bits. There is stuff on here that is more prog metal-ish, if that's your thing, but there's quite a variety of music on here. And one of the things you've got to know about Gordo Bennett is not only can he play as well as levitate uh, something that looks like this. <laughs> um, Gordo is also very good at composing orchestral 
bits, I guess, for recordings. And he has actually done that for other people's recordings in the past. Um, and as well as his own. So anyway, there is heavier stuff, there's lighter stuff, there's acoustic stuff, there's almost like electronic or industrial stuff in a few parts. There is orchestral stuff. It is quite an amazing collection. So let's dive into it. All right, so just before we start talking about it, let's just take a look at the people involved in the project. We have Gordo Bennett, who basically is doing everything with the guitars, the orchestral stuff, drum programming, lots of other things. But there are three other important contributing musicians. First of all, the amazing Peter Jones. Now, I've talked about Peter before because Peter Jones... Well, okay, I thought I had his albums ready to just whisk off the shelf here, but apparently I have reorganized my stuff and not told myself where I put them. Probably in the modern prog box. But anyway, Peter Jones has uh, Tiger Moth Tales, and I've got a couple of those CDs here. They are brilliant. He's also been singing with Red Bazaar. He is singing with Camel. Um, and he's a multi-instrumentalist. Like, seriously, this guy plays piano. He plays guitar. He plays... That piano thing that you put in your mouth, I forget what it's called. He can play saxophone, he can play Irish whistles. He is amazing and he is on here as vocals as well. He does do a bit of Irish whistle playing, so that's really awesome. Then on bass, we have Joseph Frick. He takes care of all the bass work on here. Great job there. All right, and then also on drums, we have Jay McGuerin, and he has shown up a few times in my CD collection as well. I think he was in on the Call and Tent project, as well as perhaps one or two other bands that I know of through Melodic Revolution Records. Anyway, so there you have it. Um, that is the band, those are the people involved, and now let's take a look. One more thing before we jump into this, this is an, a concept album basically about the, the creation and mankind, humankind, and the deception, and basically that we are living in the shadows. This is kind of my own interpretation, but basically we are living in the shadows away from the light of God and, you know, we, it, that light is there for us. I think that's what this is telling us in the lyrics. Um, so anyway, let's take a look. The very first track, which is... Oh, damn, I'm going to need glasses pretty darn soon. Uh, well, it's over 18 minutes long. And it's called The Beginning. And it is in... I'm going to need glasses soon. Seven parts. <laughs> the opening part is really cool. When I first heard it, I almost had this Motley Crue Shout at the Devil opening type thing. You know, this like kind of... Uh, kind of an eerie atmospheric thing and then this like a distorted voice is speaking like in the beginning and it's kind of thing but I realized later on that it is probably more closer to Rush Cygnus X1 because Gordo is a big fan of Rush and Alex Lifeson uh, and in fact Gordo said that's what he was kind of going for but there's also a part where it's just to lighten up a little bit some synthesizer comes in and at times I was reminded of Van Halen's 1984 but actually later I thought more so like Black Sabbath's Stonehenge from the Born Again album. Anyway, that is the opening. And then after that, we get into the song. The first, uh, I guess it is the second part here called The Word with Pete Jones on vocals. That comes in just after like four minutes and 20 seconds or something. Um, and Pete does a stellar job and the music is, is really fantastic, really beautiful. And there's this part there after the original, the initial singing part where the music starts to build up and build up. And then there is this riff that comes in and uh, bass and drums coming in. It actually reminded me very much of Spock's beard in a way. But you know what? Why don't we just listen to that part? The first little sample here. Let's listen to that part from the beginning <laughs> from Snakes and Angels. Here we go. Then around seven minutes, the orchestra starts coming in more. And then at about, was it eight minutes and 50 seconds, there's this big change up in the music. 
and we get this really interesting music that reminds me of something maybe from uh, Pete Jones's Tiger Moth Tales albums but as well there's this kind of layered vocals with voices kind of going in different directions which is more like Gentle Giant. It's really neat. Um, and then after that it goes on to an acoustic part and starts off quite slow and easy at first but then it picks up and this is one of those parts that really like once it gets going you you gotta hear it. So let's listen a little bit to this acoustic part here from the beginning. <laughs> Now here's the thing, if you've heard Goro Music's Fun in Outer Space album, that is an album, it's got a lot of groovy riffs, it's got heavy riffs, it's got shredding, it's got like a funky playing, it's got all sorts of electric guitar playing. But I'll tell you one thing right now, this album gives you a sneak peek into the fact that Gordo also has Gore Acoustic. Um, and it's not totally a secret because if you go back on my Music is a Journey channel, scroll on down through all the videos, you'll find a place where there is a video of trees, scenery of trees, along with music of acoustic guitar and bass, and that is Gore Acoustic. So from here on in, the music really starts to build up. The orchestra comes in, the band is in there, uh, drums and bass and guitar and everything. It becomes really grandiose. It's really like moving upwards and full of power and everything and then after that it switches gears and it comes to a stop and then suddenly we it, it switches gears we hear like an audience and we hear like a band is performing on stage and this is where it suddenly gets into this kind of prog metal type thing um, and the guitars are going wild the, the shredding and everything and then after that it suddenly changes again we get like this uh, orchestra and choir and then it gets into this part that is um, almost, I don't know, is it, is it industrial? Kind of a bit like industrial sounding anyway with these weird kind of choir-like vocals. You know what, why don't we just listen to a little bit of that so you can hear what that sounds like. <laughs> Let's listen to it. Right, and that is coming into near the end of the song and finally it comes into the kind of prog metal bit again and then concludes itself. So there is a lot of music to absorb in this here. We've got that that Rush, Van Halen, Stonehenge, Black Sabbath kind of opening there. We've got the kind of main song and then we've got the little kind of funky, weird, uh, gentle giant type bit. Uh, we've got the acoustic bit, we've got the prog metal bit, we've got the almost industrial type bit. I mean, there's a lot to swallow on this track, but I think it's basically Gordo is flexing his musical muscle and letting us know he can do a lot of different stuff. Let's move on to the next track. Son of man, are you way awake? So the next track on the album is called The Deception. Now it starts off really mellow and again we have this acoustic guitar coming in and it starts off with a very a very pretty melody and of course Pete Jones's vocals again and this goes on for a few minutes and then it suddenly changes gears and 
we get this more traditional heavy metal sound, heavy metal riff. Pete Jones's vocals are slightly distorted to give it that extra bit of edge. And honestly, it reminds me of one of the Christian metal bands I used to listen to back in the early 90s, but I cannot think exactly who it was. Was it Idol Cure or somebody like that? I don't remember, but it has, it brings back that kind of a feeling for me. And then from around 618, the music suddenly gets really naughty. I don't mean naughty like bad, bad. I mean naughty like... It's like the guitar is following one course and the rhythm is following a course and other instruments are following another course. And it, it reminds me a little bit of what Haken might try to do on some of their albums, but without actually sounding like Haken. Um, it just has that really kind of weird uh, avant-garde, almost uh, progressive metal feel to it. Maybe not avant-garde, but anyway, it is certainly a, an interesting and surprising turn in the music. In fact, most of the songs of this album are quite long, so there is room for them to evolve and, and bring in new surprises along the way. Now, I was going to play a sample from The Deception, but you know, there's actually a lot of samples on this I want to play, and I think if I play too much, I'm going to spoil the surprise. I mean, I want to get you interested. I want you to think, hey, this sounds like an album I want to hear, but uh, you're going to have to wait till September 10th. <laughs> okay, let's get on more with this sneak preview. Sneak preview. The next track is called The Wandering, and this one has a really cool beginning. I think we start off with some kind of nature sounds, and then this like really kind of eerie, sparse musical atmosphere comes in. It kind of reminds me of something from IQ's album Road of Bones, but again, not exactly like something from that album. It just gave me that, you know, what does it sound like? Where have I heard something like this before, maybe? Maybe it was on an IQ album. I'm guessing. But anyway, it has this just really cool intro and because I think it sounds so cool, I just want you to hear some of it. So let's listen to a little bit of a part from The Wandering, the third track on Gordo Gore Music's album Snakes and Angels. Here it is. Then after this, as the song develops more, it gets again into this kind of progressive metal type feel. Gordo lays down the riffs and the music really starts developing. You've got like the, the synthesizers coming in, the keyboards and so on, along with the guitar. Uh, this is the orchestral bits again. And I think this track may very well be my favorite from the album. And then of course, we've got Peter Jones's vocals coming in again. He's really such a great choice for this album, I think. And then the music takes a turn, and again we get this kind of like sparse, kind of like lost in space almost type feeling in the atmosphere. And it moves on then into the bit of a, a guitar solo bit, and then we get this really interesting keyboard solo. And I really thought this part also is something I want to share with you, because once again it shows that Gordo is not all about just fingers on the fretboard. I mean, the music he creates covers a variety of different things, and I think this was really also a cool part for me. So let's listen a little bit to this one too from The Wandering.
After this part here, it builds on and then I think Gordo goes a little berserkers <laughs> on the fretboard there. The guitar solo starts getting wilder and wilder. Um, it, it almost feels like, uh, I, I don't know, like he's, he's his fingers are, are trying hard to stay on the fretboard. I don't know, he's like getting up the seat and falling over because he's had a couple of beers. I don't know what it is, but it, it has a really cool effect. And then the last part of the song, things kind of calm down again and, and you go back to this kind of really serene but kind of sparse atmosphere. And then there's actually a spoken part, which is really cool. And this is Gordo doing the actual spoken part here. And I think he does it really well. I mean, I, I've only heard his voice a few times, <laughs> but uh, he does a really great job of doing this kind of um, spoken poem part or spoken lyrics. It's really cool. Anyway, that is The Wandering. That's the third track. And we still have two more tracks to go and they are great. So let's get on with the next track. The fourth track on the album is called The Lost. And this is... It was a contender for my favorite track on the album. The first five minutes could have been a single on their own. It is a beautiful song with acoustic guitar, beautiful vocal melodies, beautiful guitar melodies. It is just wonderful. And because I love it so much, and it, it has that feeling also of coming to the end, of coming through strife and difficulty and darkness and, and coming through and seeing that there is going to be a happy ending. It just has that feeling to it. And we're not at the end of the album yet, really. <laughs> but it is so beautiful. So please listen to this part here from the fourth track on the album, The Lost. Just check this out. Yeah, I can't stress enough how great Pete Jones's vocals are for this the music on this album. He's done a fantastic job. Now, after this part here, the music changes. We get into a, a more kind of quieter, um, a little bit more serious part. And then uh, it moves on to another section, which brings in a flute solo. Yeah, I mean, if you've heard, if you've watched other videos, you know I like flutes. I like flutes in rock music and I like flute solos. So I want to feature from The Lost, one more part from this song I want to let you hear is this part here with the flute solo as it comes to the end. And then the acoustic guitars come back in again. It's really cool. So please check this part out here. <laughs> Alright, so after this wonderful section, it then moves on and um, there is another thing. It sounds like it could be some kind of woodwind instrument or it could also be some kind of synthesizer guitar effect and I'm not really sure which it is. And I'm not going to try to find out either right now because I'm going to leave that as a kind of surprise element on the album for you to check out. But it's really cool. and. There are a couple of parts during the flute solo and a little bit later on where the main melody from the beginning part comes back. 
And I actually had the feeling that they were going to take us through this long journey because the track is actually 17 minutes long, a little bit over that. And I thought that the track was going to conclude bringing us back to that beautiful melody from the beginning, but it doesn't. It's kind of weird because you think, yeah, and then, oh, uh, and oh, it ended. I mean, it, it's beautiful, but where did that part go? I really wanted to hear that part again to bring me home. And that brings us to the last track on the album, The Lost Orchestra. Now this, we've heard orchestra on the album so far. We have heard string parts and we have heard brass parts and it's been really effective. But this part here, Gordo really flexes his orchestral composition musical muscle. Um, and it's, it's a brilliant thing. It has this really like deep, heavy mood, a deep, heavy brass and, and as it starts off. And then later on, it does this switch over again, bringing this kind of almost industrial feel to it. And then it goes to another section and it has like, um, again, we have like the strings for the orchestra, but we also get these kind of electronic computer type sounds over. And this is something I found that happens a couple of times on the album. You'll have something like strings or acoustic guitar, some more traditional sounds, but then Gorda will put in some like kind of computer type or electronic type sounds going with it. And I find that that's really interesting because you don't expect that to come into it. So it's pretty cool. And then as we come to the end of the track, the last couple of minutes, that wonderful melody from the beginning of the previous track, The Lost, comes back. And it is just a short bit. It is probably like less than two minutes, but it comes back again. The orchestra is there, that melody is there. And really that's what I was looking for to end the album. I wanted that feeling of, we have come through the darkness, we have reached the light, and we are ending on a positive note. And there it is. It's there. Gordo put it in for us. Hooray! And then finally, it just fades out, and we are left with the sounds of nature, um, which were recorded in Gordo's very large backyard. He has his own pond. He lives on a mountain. <laughs> I'm a little bit envious. <laughs> but yeah, also nature sounds is something that comes up on the album uh, here and there, So, and all of it is recorded from... Uh, Gordo's yard. <laughs> so there you have it. That's just my brief rundown of the Snakes and Angels album. I made all these notes tonight while riding home on the train and listening very carefully. And again, like I said, this is maybe my fourth or fifth time listening to the album. And in the beginning, it was just exciting to hear what has Gordo done. We've been waiting for this for a couple of years now. And now that I've heard it a few times, I really appreciate this guy is amazing what he can do. Um, he's a genius. <laughs> Gordo, you're a genius. I know you'll deny it, but have a cigar. Okay, so who is Gordo Bennett, right? I mean, here I am raving about this album. What a, what an amazing person he is. Well, first of all, you can go check him out at his Gore website. I don't know where is it going to appear. Probably somewhere around here. You can go check it out there. I'll also put this in the description of the video, so you can just click on it and go there. And then also he's on... Oh, where did I see him now? I found him on one other website. I'll put that one here. <laughs> okay, and this also has information about him. But basically, Gordo started playing guitar as a teenager when I was still watching Sesame Street. So he's a little bit older than me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was influenced by all the big progressive bands of the 1970s and a big fan of Rush, as I said, as well as, as a lot of the other big bands. I think like Yes and Genesis and so on. Uh, he has a list of guitarists that really inspired him. Um, he has a long history of playing in bands and working on things, but I think as as with many people I've talked about, as life went on and they got married and they had a family, it just wasn't practical to try to be a full-time musician. So he did have to settle down for a, with a day job, but he never let his musical aspirations die, thank goodness. And in more recent years, you know, the kids have grown up, left the nest, He's had time to work on a variety of different uh, bands with a variety of different bands. He has done, I forget the name of the first person. Well, I actually talked about Gordo in a video. I think it's episode two of Music is a Journey. So you can go way back and check that. But uh, one of the artists he has worked with is um, Josh Lebowitz. He uh, did a guitar solo on Band of Rain's Dust of Stars album. And that's actually... Thanks to Gordo appearing on that album that I got to know of Band of Rain and Chris Gill. So that is really cool because, you know, I like Band of Rain. I've talked about them a few times as well. 
But the big thing, and this is actually how I got to know, Go know Gordo, was that he kind of, uh, what, like, a bamboozled his way into the Colin Tench Project album, Hair on a G-String, by... because um, he was with the Progressive Fraternity. Gordo has composed, uh, composed music for... Uh, orchestral music for a track by the Progressive Fraternity. And Colin Tench was also going to appear on a Progressive Fraternity album. So, uh, they kind of... he knew... Gordo knew about Colin through that, and then Colin put some song he was working on on the internet, and then Gordo said, hey, I think I could do something with that, and he took it. And then he added something to it, and then he said, hey, Colin, I hope you don't mind, but I did this to your song, <laughs> and sent it back again. And Colin said, well, this is... this is really what I need for the album, so... How would you like to come on board? And so Gordo appears not only on the first Hair in a G-String album here, but also on the Minor Masterpiece album. But uh, if you follow this channel and you've seen other videos, you also know that not only is Colin Tench the whole reason why this channel even got started in the first place, but also that Colin Tench most sadly passed away just after the release of this album. So that is one common uh, thread connecting Gordo and I. Uh, we were both friends with Colin. Me just as a kind of friend of Colin <laughs> through the internet and Gordo as a collaborator with Colin. So anyway, yes, Gordo does the orchestral stuff for those two albums. I talked about Gordo's uh, Fun in Outer Space album. He has also got a couple of other things going on including Gore Fusion and Gore Acoustic working together with uh, bass guitarist Joe Saranowski. And if I can just show you something. Here is uh, one of the t-shirts for Gore Music. This is for a track that was called Waxed Apples. It says here, uh, sorry, it says Gore Fusion, Gore Music here, Joe Serenowski, Trout and Bass. But actually the trout is covered, it just says Trout and Bass. <laughs> anyway, uh, this and then one other one here. This is Gore Music, Gore Fusion. This was for a track called Moonwink. Oh, these are both instrumentals, by the way. Uh, Joe Serenowski bass down here. Um, and if you look at this funny moon face picture, you might recognize it. Where'd he go? He's over here. Can you see him? This guy. <laughs> so, just a kind of little fun background story about that. Uh, Gordo asked me to actually do the artwork for these two instrumental tracks that he and Joe released. And this was really fun. Um, I'm not going to wave the shirts around. Instead, I'll show you a picture here for Waxed Apples. This was something I actually created in this room. And it was really a fun thing to do because I had the concept of really waxing up some apples. I bought some white candles. I melted them down. I dipped the apples in them and even took a bite out of one wax-coated apple. And it was actually a lot of work. I sent several pictures to Gordo and the project kind of developed and Gordo said, okay, I like this picture. And then I thought, I can do more with it. And I did some more with it. And then finally he selected that one, but we didn't have Joe Sorbonowski's name in there. So could I put that in somehow? And I actually wrote it on a separate piece of paper, photographed that, then put that paper through the same filters as I had used for the other photo and then blended the two photos together. Um, it was really a fun thing to do. I've never done that kind of photography before and it was so so great, um, so much fun. And then Gordo asked me to do the Moonwink one. So I had a concept in mind. Uh, here we go. Here's the Moonwink picture. I had a concept in mind of this winking moon and a couple standing looking at the moon. So I made everything with this styrofoam ball and in the actual picture it is superimposed with a photograph of the full moon. Then the other parts of the picture are all assembled by little craft bits that I found at my workplace because we have some uh, little kids classes where they do some crafts and so on. So I nicked little bits and pieces here and there. We had some popsicle sticks at home which I cut up to make the fence and I thought it would be kind of funny, a little bit like rock and roll that type of thing, if the guy and girl standing together, um, the guy's hand was going under her skirt a little bit. So that's kind of a, yeah, kind of Homage to 70s rock album covers, I guess. I mean, they've, they've been weirder ones out there, right? <laughs> Scorpions Love Drive, right? But anyway, um, 
and the catch by Nazareth and so on. Smell the glove, spinal tap. Okay, anyway. Yeah, so that was really a fun thing, but it was darn hard to do. And in fact, this photo here, I actually had to shoot it. The moon was shot separately. The people and the fence and everything were shot separately. The cotton balls were shot separately. And then I had to assemble them all together to make it into one cohesive picture. And because of the differences in the background black, it wasn't uniform. And I spent a heck of a long time trying to make it as uniform as possible. And I wasn't totally satisfied with the end results, but um, just looking at it here on the album cover and on the t-shirt and so on, I think it looks really cool. So you know what I think we should do now is we should also listen to just a little bit of music from Gore Music, um, Gore Fusion with Joe Serwanowski on bass. Let's listen a little bit to Why Not Waxed Apples. Here we go. Okay, so there you have it. There's your sneak preview. I guess I should mention one more thing also. Gore Music was, is working on an album. Um, maybe I shouldn't say the name just yet. It should be a surprise. That is going to be the next one. But there is a track called Aftermath you can check out on Gordo's website. So give a listen to that one too because that one is also something different but really cool. Okay, so that's it. You've had your sneak preview. Sneak preview. Yes, of the Snakes and Angels Origins album by Gore Music coming out on September 10th on the Melodic Revolution Records label. I do highly recommend checking it out. I hope this sneak preview here has piqued your interest, whet your appetite, got you salivating for more. <laughs> okay. Thank you all very much. Thanks to Gordo for sending me the album and the t-shirts. I'm doing my best to try to promote you, man. <laughs> Thanks to Nick also at Melodic Revolution Records for giving me permission, giving us permission to feature a little bit of leakage of this fantastic album. Uh, permitted leakage. <laughs> and everybody else, thank you for watching. And I will see you again in another video sometime when I get around to it. Okay, everybody, stay safe and take care. Bye for now. Gordo.